the way to pass the gaming show the finals in Washington. They're gonna bury here to go on to face. Ooh. It is a battle for the ages here in week four of the Caps Gaming Showcase presented to you by Lightos and powered by Lee Gaming. Two one and two teams. However, big playoff implications as one team looks to make this a two and two endeavor for them and move their way up the ladder to try to punch their ticket into the playoffs come just in a few weeks time. Only eight weeks in the regular season and every single win matters. So going two and two can be make or break for this club or whoever decides to work their way up and get this victory for their team. Good evening, hello, and welcome everybody live from Tampa and virtually across the entire United States of America. My name is Nick DeMeo, a.k.a. F5 Penguin, alongside with you for this ride here in this best of three between CBJ Gaming and the Helmet Boys Joining me here, Brandon B. Major Bigsby. Lime out today with a sickness. We hope you get better, buddy. I know we're all fighting it here, there, and near. But nevertheless, we're fighting something tonight on the virtual ice. And that is going to be two teams here fighting for that two and two spot. Brandon, what do you make of the matchup right now? Well, it's interesting with this matchup because you have two teams in CBJ Gaming and the Helmet Boys that have won games and have won a few rounds in the playoffs before but are looking to kind of take that next step and really cement themselves as true contenders in some of these tournaments both of these teams made the playoffs in the caps gaming showcase last season cbj making it to round three before getting knocked out to instinct and the helmet boys making it round two before getting knocked out to resilience so both these two teams have proved they can make it to the show now they want to kind of build on that a little bit of a slow start starting out one and two but if they can get back to 500 at two and two there's a lot of movement to be had nick and a lot of teams that are in that two to two to two one to two area so a lot can happen here and this could be a big game to change the fortunes for either of these two squads you mentioned one and two we look at the stat line there for the record in this swiss format best of threes determining the winner walking away with one victory per week we have eight weeks before the playoffs three played so far Looking at the stat line, though, time on attack difference, shot difference, not favoring the Helmet Boys. What do you make of that against a what could be a growingly hot CBJ club? Yeah, and I think something to notice that CBJ didn't actually get to play any games in week one. They had a forfeit series loss in those two games. So really, they've only played about four or five actual games. So some of the stats kind of skewed for that reason. But I think the big thing for the Helmet Boys is that time on attack. You see, there's a two minute difference in how much time on attack CBJ average gets compared to what the helmet boys usually do and we know how well this cbj team can play when they're clicking on all cylinders especially with shelves and junior pens two guys that i know that the hut and versus community are extremely familiar with for their elite play over there you know they will get the puck out to their forwards and really be strong on the breakout something that is critical to any successful offensive team helmet boys really gonna have to stifle that otherwise it's uh gonna mean a little bit of trouble there for the defensive end of that team trouble indeed as we look over and see kind of uh like you mentioned no wins officially for cbj at least on the actual ice so owen two is what they're looking at when it comes down to play but they have guys like cookie junior pens jaff cj all of these ones and threes and now sixes players finding some success together as a team they've been together for a while and I think they're just a couple of pieces away from just getting it to click. This could be the game where they make that happen. Yeah, and you know, it's kind of funny because CBJ, they kind of remind me of a team that we saw in week one, at least in terms of where they are in terms of like the tiers of esports in the NA, but it's kind of like Gabagoons a little bit, right? They've been to a few tournaments, they've made a few playoffs, they've even pulled off a few upsets and have beaten some notable teams, even in the other tournament going on by CBJ under a different name in 614 Hockey. 
just beat Hidden Potential in round one in that series. So they've proven they've been able to compete with these top teams. It's just a matter of can they do so consistently and can they get it all to click when needed. If they can do that, CBJ could be a dark horse here in the series. And then just the playoffs in general as we kind of start to move our way towards playoff hunt time, Nick. Yeah, playoffs not too far around the corner. And you might be right. It could be a team that shows off here in the, the most opportune time. We look at something interesting there as far as stat line is concerned. 45 teams are either 2-1 and one or 1-2. One and two. So this actually does make a big difference where half of those teams are going to move to that 2-2 two and two position in this Swiss format. Will it be CBJ? Will it be the Helmet Boys? But that's actually pivotal considering how many teams in the running are actually in that weird fringe position. You don't want to go one and three having eight games to or eight series to determine who gets to the playoffs, right? Yeah, and if you do go one and three, you're kind of at a point to where realistically to kind of get in those last fringe playoff spots, you need to win at least two of the next three. One and three and two and two are two completely different scenarios because now it kind of becomes a bit of an uphill battle to ensure that you're in those last playoff spots. So whoever drops this series is going to have a lot of work cut out for them and able to get themselves in that positioning. While if you're two and two, you're back to 500. It's a clean slate for the next four weeks and you have everything ahead of you with similar teams with the same record as you to play as well so a big difference in a potential season changing series for both these two sides expect them to bring their best here in two or possibly three games who's your standout player as the players are set up in the locker room who are you looking to see step up or step out of their normal comfort zone and make an impact on the ice tonight Something I'm going to be interested to see for the Helmet Boys is Slice. He has 11 total goals for this Helmet Boys team, and the next closest number is two which is Naslin and Kolmikov, who are tied for that number. He's been the main goal scorer for that team by a pretty large margin. You know CBJ is going to know that, so watch out for the matchup between him and Junior Pens on the right side at right D for CBJ. Going to be huge for Slice to show up for his team. He's done well all season. Can he do it again against a tough matchup on the right side in Junior Pens? CBJ Gaming in the white Columbus Blue Jackets jerseys. We know them. Going north on your screen. And those, the Helmet Boys, THB, going south on your screen. We'll get this going here today as the opening faceoff is underway for the Caps Gaming Showcase, presented to you by Lightos and powered by League Gaming. As we get off to an early offside start that seems to be the MO for some teams as of late as that one's pushed win, picked up by nobody as that's shoveled along for Slice, the men, men you mentioned earlier. As the P, Perelzi, makes the first save of the game. Face off to the right of Perelzi, who just smothered that one up in his bread basket. That's picked up. Slice with a shot there. It's two shots by Slice, two shots total. One hitting the net here for the Helmet Boys early on. Intercepted by Slice. We'll hear his name a lot, hopefully, as Brandon's breakout player of the series. Jan's going to hold at the corner. Waiting for a lane to open up. He's going to buy some time. Shoved along behind the net. Picked up by Jaff. Jaff loses it just as quickly as he had it. That was going to be moved out. Demare. Now with it. Up to Slice in the corner now. Out to the point. Intercepted by Jaff. They'll fight for it. Out skirting into the high slot area and moved out of the zone. Here's a chance there, and that was just a shot off the back of the cage. Not sure if he meant to do that. As Jaff loses it from a big hit, still in the zone, though. Now coming out, they'll have to reset, and they will. Charlo, up the left side, rubbed off the puck as soon as he got into the zone. Is the helmet, boys. They've got it down low now. Scooping one in front. Chance. Good save there by Perelzi, and just cleared out by Shelves. You know him as Top Shelf Cookie. So we go icing, 12-11 here in the first. Home game so far, Nick. Not really too much high-paced action here the first eight minutes. Kind of get the feeling that these teams are kind of just feeling each other out, kind of seeing the way this game is going to flow. Going to be interesting to see where the first flurry of chances comes from. Jan with a great pass up to Jaff. Looking for the backhand, but he pulls away. Set back to Jan. 
Short side opportunity from a low angle behind the red line. Doesn't get it past the goalkeeper in Kokona. That shot does make it on net, though. Perelzi's going to push that one to his right. It's scooped out by CBJ Gaming. Three wide coming into the zone. Slot area. Shot backhand. Chance! And saved there by Pugarino. As the Pug himself scoops that one up, his face off the beat to his left. Quick win back to the left D for CBJ Gaming. Looking to center that one. Off the breakup from the loose puck. Back to the skate and stick of Jaff. And he scores and it's 1-0. And a big one there from Jaff to get the scoring kicked off there. Kind of just a classic instance of you get the puck on net and you never know what's going to happen. You see it's right off the rebound there. Jaff positions himself well for that opportunity. Right on the right side of the post. Not much you can do there as the goalie in Pugarino. And CBJ opens up the scoring for this series to get up 1-0. You'll see the stats, the games, the score lines all come in at the top of your screen. Be on the lookout for that courtesy of League Gaming's Dynamic Stats System. Brought to you only on LeagueGaming.com. Jaff with a shot there. That hits a man in front. That was CJ. He was trying to get out of the way of the puck, but he couldn't do so. Now it's pushed along. Jan trying to bring it back in the zone. He'll get stopped short. Charlo. Moves it along, Naslin, here he goes. Naslin looking for a centering feed, intercepted by CBJ's defense. That one's fought along the boards. Slice gonna come out with it, but not for long. He'll get bumped aside. Damari, now in the corner, he's got wrecked. And Jaff will bring it out for his squad. Up now, Jan, pushed at the blue line. They'll reset and try it a second time. They'll try to get in, but it's offside. 5-11 to go here in the first. Face off in neutral zone. We get the drop, CJ and Naslin. One more time, Naslin wins that one. As the singer, no, the player, Bowie, sends it out for Damari. He's got it. Need off the puck. That's a shot in. And it's kick saved away to the left side of the ice. Lost it behind the net, though. That was Cookie, who did lose it briefly, but was able to clear the zone. CJ now with it, spinning, loses it. Two on two back the other way. Slice had a step. Outstretched stick from Jaff, though, breaks up that play. And will bring it back down the ice. Jan, Jaff looking for a lane. He's got one behind the net. Tried to go in short side on the back skate. That one was denied by Pugarino. Neymare, left side, poke check free. Cookies there. That 1v1 defense from TSC. He knows how to play that. As the final 10 seconds coming up upon us here real time to conclude the first period. Quick boarded pass there, sauced up for Jan. He'll scoop it up, but lose it quickly as the slap shot comes out of the zone. So that's gonna do it for the first period. Not a lot of action, but enough action to make this a one nothing game for CBJ. Yeah, Nick, and a pretty calm first period overall. Obviously, CBJ striking first there, taking advantage of their opportunity. But other than that, it just kind of, you get the feeling, like we were mentioning earlier, these two teams kind of just letting the game flow and kind of just feeling each other out a little bit. Obviously, you don't always know what you're going to get from your opponent when it's two teams that don't play each other often. Obviously, the um, opposite that we saw in our Week 3 matchup that we covered in Composure and Entourage and two teams that have faced each other each other time after time after time helmet boys and cbj not super familiar with each other so the first 20 minutes kind of a feel out period just to see the way the game's gonna go what your opponent is gonna kind of look to do and just kind of strategizing from there i would not be surprised at all if things kind of pick up a little bit in the second period as both of these teams kind of settle in and get comfortable with what they want to do second period about to get underway here we have a face-off win back. Botanik. He's got it again. He's fed the offense for his squad most of the time here, at least through the first period of this contest. Centering feed. That was a good look there. Tipped in front. But denied by Perelzi. That one's up for Jaff. He'll take it through. CJ's got it back on his stick. Betting one over. Back to Jaff, and it just couldn't connect. Bounced off the backboard. 
And up for Charlo. He'll get rubbed off the puck. So will CJ. As now Jaff got it. No, now Jan. Jan. Good for Jaff. He'll pick it up off the errant pass off the boards. Another cross crease attempt there. And that's where CBJ is going. Back and forth across the ice. So far they haven't connected as it's flipped in. By Junior Pens. Junior Pens a 1v1 star. Coming up big multiple times in his career. Looking for a big win here in sixes as we go offside here in the second period. Yeah, and that's something that we kind of uh, talked about earlier is the 1v1 connection with Cookie and Pens. It's something that can really translate in defense with how you can break the puck out and really generate for your fours. They're two guys that can really generate plays and get things going for the offense. It's going to be hard for Helmet Boys to stop them, so we'll see how they look to counter that on the breakout for CBJ. Nice chop there, bounced into a dangerous area, but they were able to clear. Jaff's got it on a stick in the offensive zone, not for long. Bowie breaks that one free. And Damare, looking for Elaine. He's got it down low now, back up, left point. Left point, Charlo, stolen by Cookie. He'll stop short, send it up for Jaff. Good feed there. Drop it back, right point. Junior Penn, slap shot, holds and delayed. Got that shot on, one-time chance there. Denied by the defense of the Helmet Boys. Still in the zone now, they've got to go to work here. Jaff in down low, good shot, a good way to find that pass, looking for a shot. Second effort, third effort. Finally scores, and it's CJ making this one 2-0. Well, it doesn't have to always be pretty. They ask how many, not how. And CJ getting greasy there in front of the net. Second time that CBJ has kind of gotten one of those in front of the net, popped out from the goalie goals, and they've taken advantage of them there to make it a 2-0 game here in the second. And they're just buckshot shooting that puck in. When they're in down low, they're just firing it on net as much as they possibly can. It seems to be working so far as they've got helmet boys all sorts of all over the places. That shot trickled through and made it to the skate of the goalkeeper in Pugarino. Third shot there. Good save by Pug again. As CBJ really putting the pressure on right now for the helmet boys as they're down by two. Got to get out of this situation early if they want to make something of themselves and push this back into a closer contest than it at least is on paper right now. Held along the corner in the left corner. Broken out by Junior Pens from the right side. He'll bank it along the boards intended for CJ. That's broken up now. Slice. Sidesteps one. Wrist shot on the other. Good save there by Perelzi. And down low now. Looking to move it out. They will. Jaff one on one. Left side. Got some speed setting for Jan. Backhand. Chance off the iron. And that loose puck bounced up and down a couple of times as a slap shot was upon us. Looking for the Omaha or maybe the direct slap shot pass. Up for a player that snuck behind the defense to CBJ, but that was snuffed out quickly. And they'll spar with it along the blue line. Out with it will be Jan. Jan still in the zone, though, finally cleared. And now Junior Penn's got to step on him. Try to deke around that defensive play. Couldn't make it happen. Cookie's got it from the left circle. Moving it down low. Stolen now by Charlo. Charlo meets two CBJ tackers. And he lost the puck just briefly. Before getting it back, but now it falls to the stick of the left defender in Cookie. Cookie flips it in. Lots of speed there for Jaff to get to it. Can he get there? He will, fighting for it from the corner. He's out with it. In front. Good feed there for CJ. Now left point. Cookie. The shot in. That was fallen to the laid down stick of Naslund as he stole that one. And blocked that shot attempt. Junior Prince trying to whiff that one along the boards. Can't get there. Short side shot. Comes in. Good save. Perelzi. Jaff going to look to clear it. Get out of this period with a two-goal lead. They will. So it's 2-0 after a quick period. A little bit of action. And some good saves by the gold goalkeepers. But none besting Perelzi so far. It's 2-0. Yeah, and, and for the Helmet Boys, I think they've had solid goaltending in that, kind of like what you said. Nick Pugarino has made two or three really solid saves on the chances that CBJ is really put on. And keep in mind, by the way, that breakaway there that CBJ had, it might have hit off the post, but it was great positioning there from Pugarino and a great read in order to cut that space off and not give a chance for him to maybe sneak that in there on that backhand. So keep that one in mind if the Helmet Boys are able to climb their way back into this one. But this game kind of has a similar feel to the EU games that we had earlier where 
CBJ, kind of like Goons did earlier, really dominating the time of possession in terms of the quality and how many opportunities they're getting. Doesn't really feel like we've seen just that high danger opportunity yet for Helmet Boys. Going to want to generate something here because 2-0 lead and 20 minutes left, lots of time, but you don't want to play around too much. 3-0 would be a big mountain to climb. 3-0 is a big mountain to climb as they tried to rebound from that 2-0 deficit early on here in the third as you saw a shot attempt come in from the Helmet Boys. But that was denied yet again by Perelzi. Damare. Yanking that one away is Jan. Up for Jaff now. Jaff across the red line. Couldn't make progress through that. They'll reset back into their end. Try it again. They got through. Just as quickly as they did, they lost it though. And a couple of poke checks forces that behind the net. Trying to scoop that one up was Perelzi, but he couldn't get his glove on it. Play continues on. Third period, already a quarter of the way gone. CJ from the left corner. Feeds that one into Jaff. Now Junior Penn's right point back into the slot area. Jaff was trying to drive that lane. Couldn't get the shot on. Final scores coming in here. Paternity test falling to Magical 7-0. The early onset of this week four chance there by CJ. That one rang off the post. And now we've got our first penalty. CJ gets oh, no, interference call. Looked like a trip there, but CJ draws that penalty and CBJ Gaming will go on the power play. Yeah, and a good power play here. You would hope for CBJ. If they can go up 3-0, that could possibly change the course of this game. Helmet Boys have been solid on the PK all season long so far. They'll have to do it again at a critical point. Solid for sure. And as they're 91%, which is great. Nine. Ranked ninth in the entire league, which is fantastic as we have an offside here. I guess they didn't touch that up. So we'll take it back to the neutral zone. A minute 15 left on the power play. But yeah, one for 12. Giving up one goal on 12 chances on the penalty kill is the Helmet Boys. They look to do that here as they're going to need to. Can't go down 3 0 with about 12 minutes left here in the third period. Starstruck breaking out against the Virtual Brothers, though. That's a big one to watch at as the VB team was looking to get hot here. Let's see if they force a game three in their series. Looking for the one time chance was Cookie to Jaff. That one was denied by the defense for the Helmet Boys. Now Jaff getting accosted. Poke check found the stick of Charlo instead. Banked along the boards and cleared, but not all the way out. But penalty time will expire. Back to five on five. 6v6 hockey here in this Caps Gaming Showcase week number four. Laying out that stick, love save, traffic in front. And a rebound opportunity was their best look yet tonight. But it was shut down by the wing pair of CBJ Gaming for now. They have it back on the attack. Dropping it off, left point, slap shot in. Got through, but it didn't make it past the goalie in Pugarino. Damare will take it out for his squad. That'll fall back to Charlo. Now Charlo in for Bowie. Back to Charlo as they're going to slow things down and try not to get dissed as they'll flip it in. Giving Chase with it. Right corner out with it. Cookie will reverse play. Bring it over to Jaff. Now Pens will pick it up. Pens tossing it up looking for Jaff. Couldn't get there. Slice will take it back the other way. Now up center point. Oh, and that's a wrist shot, slap shot rather coming in from the left circle. That one beat the goalie, but it didn't beat the post. Bounced and rang off the post behind the backboards. And it's going to be sent along. 5.51 to go in the third period. The Helmet Boys starting to pick up a little bit of steam. Yeah, and this is going to be a big-time face-off here. I can't even remember the last time we saw an offensive zone face-off for Helmet Boys. Got to convert here. Can they get an opportunity here? Set play. They won it, but that's going to be broken up by the wing pair in CBJ Gaming. Driving the lane there. Second chance off the rebound. And Pugarino able to keep his team in the game right now. Slice with speed now. Driving in front. Just trying to throw it on net and get something to bounce. Couldn't connect that time. Cookie tried to sidestep that one with a little bit of a deke as Entourage beats Red Life 6-0 in game number one of their series. As that puck was dinking and dunking around, we'll go offside. 3.25 to go. And this is where Helmet Boys have to step up big here and start going for those Omahas or... Trying to break through the defense behind and get caught behind Pens and Cookie there on defense. But not with Jaff accosting them on the puck. He's got it behind the net. Drop off the left side. 
Back up now for Jaff again. One, two chance. Good shot in. Better save by Pugarino. Charlo holds. We're going to get a shot in early here and get this to a 2 1 game. Got to get it here if they're going to make it happen. But not if Pens can take it away, and he does. As Jaff moves it up now, Jan. Jan stops short. Buying some time, throwing in down low. Smart play. Back to Jan. Good shot. Doesn't make it through, though. A couple of 1-0 games coming in. Under a minute here in the third period. That wrist shot doesn't get through. It bounces and exits the zone. Charlo will try again. Slice got it, and that one's poke check free. Good defense here by CBJ. Trying to hold on as they pull their goalie. Does the helmet, boys. Shot in. Unfortunately, it did not happen at a good time as Jan... We'll get the insurance marker, and this one's 3 nothing. Yeah, and honestly, the defense really need the credit there for that goal from CBJ. They have been absolutely phenomenal and not allowing Helmet Boys to get anything quick and easy in the neutral zone. They've really tried to utilize that left side of the ice, which would be the right side of the ice here for CBJ. Got to give a huge credit to both Junior Pence at the right D and Jaff at the right wing for really locking down that right side. And a couple of passes bounced off of a skate or two. And that one goes in as well. It's 4 nothing with CJ getting a marker here in the trash time of period number three, some would say. But it's not a trash time for these two players or these two teams for sure, as every single thing that happens on the ice matters in a best of three, despite what time it might be on the game clock. Under 10 seconds here. In for Naslin. Two poke checks away. Jaff's got it. Now up. Slap shot it through. Picking it up was Jan trying to get to it before time expired. But it will. And CBJ Gaming looking to really climb the ladder here. Walks away with a victory in game number one. A shutout for Perelzi. And they win this one 4 nothing. Yeah, and I think CBJ, you got to be happy with how really everything about that game went really controlled the way that this game went for the for the most part. And it's funny because you look at the face-off numbers, Helmet Boys won 14 out of the 17 face-offs. So it's not often that you see a team really be able to dominate the play the way the CBJ has been in that game one with the face-off numbers being rather lopsided, quite honestly. So a big credit to their defense. Perelzi making multiple big key saves at timely points for Columbus. And then you have the timely goals that they had, the two just kind of greasy goals in front of the net there in the first and second period. And then at the end, defense held strong. They got the two empty netters, and CBJ executed, did what they needed to do, and they're up one nothing because of it, Nick. And they're trying to get shots in. Obviously, that game was a little bit different than the way it looked on the scoreline. 2 nothing up until the end where the empty net goal and then that extra goal there at the end. But those two goals, like you said, greasy goals. For sure, as they post the score above us right here, thanks to League Gaming's dynamic stats. But those two goals actually came from a team effort, a concerted position where they got the puck down low, broke it into that red line behind the goalie, and then just started generating havoc. Kind of back and forth the other way, a one-two punch, a quick one and give and go on a shot and then a pass, and then now the puck goes in. Or cross-crease passes, getting the defense shifting left and then right. That does catch the defense out of position from time to time. And then once you're looking for that, what seems to happen is then they're going to capitalize the other way. So it's been interesting to watch Jan, Jaff, and CJ do that tonight with Pens and Cookie kind of getting the puck up at the top of the circles and then sending it back down low, whether it be from a shot or from a pass back along the boards. They're able to keep the puck down in the zone and that forces those wingers to come low. It's been interesting to watch them do that and to see them have a lot of success from it. Yeah, and it's funny that you say that because more times when you watch these Sixers games, especially in NA, most teams are honestly okay with giving you that behind the net kind of stuff that's not really a threat because it's like, oh, you can't really score from there. It's not in the middle. It's not really in the front. 
So when you're having the puck right there, it's not an immediate high danger opportunity. But for CBJ, the way they play, when they control that possession, when they have the puck for so long, after a while as a defense, it's it's going to give after a while. Something's going to break a little bit positionally. Things are going to loosen up a little bit. And something is going to break open. And if your goalie doesn't come up and make a big save, it, more times than not, it's going to come back to bite you. And it's hard to re-rely on that as a defense, which is why it's so important to really get as much positive zone time as you can, which Helmet Boys weren't really able to do in that game one. So going to be interesting to see how they adjust to that play style from CBJ and now what they've seen for three periods, the way that they play and how they can counteract that. Yeah, and as we talk about NHL club counterparts here in eSports, getting victories. Well, New Jersey Devils Gaming Club also walks away with a victory 5-1 versus the Wicked here uh, as we just saw that scoreline come in. So a very different game here from CBJ than we might have seen in the past, especially with some of the heartbreaking losses that they've had. They've really started to put together a good squad and it's paid off in spades for them, at least right now as the Helmet Boys looks to rebound from that. And I think you have to look to Slice to step up a little bit more. Had a couple of big chances, just couldn't get one that made it the finality. And as a result, Perelzi walks away with the shutout. Yeah, and I kind of mentioned it earlier, but you could really tell the Helmet Boys were trying to get Slice involved a lot. You even said in the first period that it was Botanique really pushing the play up for Helmet Boys, which is on that left side with Slice, and the majority of the shots on net came from Slice in that game as well. So they tried to get him involved, but I think a lot of that goes to the credit of CBJ. They know that is their best producer in terms of offensive play, and you have to give credit to the right side defense of Jaff and Junior Pens to shut that down and not allow too many high quality opportunities so easy to kind of look at slice and like hey man you're our main point producer where were you that game we got shut out but it takes good defense to stop that it's not just oh someone disappeared so i expect to hear a little bit more of slice's name in game too but you have to credit the defensive effort as a team from cbj to not allow too much from him there we said he was going to be good coming in they do it as well so they game planned around it and they executed it yeah, they definitely did. You look at the score lines, the stat lines of what these players can do. Slice coming into the night, 11 goals, two assists. The rest of the team collectively, four goals. So not going to cut it. If you're feeding everything to Slice and you can shut him down, then you have to find another answer. And I, I think at this point, if you're the Helmet Boys, you have to find another answer. Maybe Naslin needs to step up a little bit and uh, change the point of attack. Because if it's all feeding through from Boat and Eek, up to slice they're snuffing that out and collectively I, I think defensively you can't ask for a better performance from your two defensemen and from the goalkeeper if you do net that shutout yeah and i think a lot of that kind of goes to the way that the helmet boys play they don't really play that typical really fast paced running gun style that you would see from a team like entourage for example they kind of play a slow and steady move the puck around kind of methodically move their way up the ice kind of game and when you have a team that can shut down the neutral zone the way that cbj did that game and not let you get across the blue line that easily it makes it a lot harder for a guy like slice to get those opportunities for himself especially when you are looking specifically to get that one player his opportunity so you might have to see a few more quick plays maybe a couple of omaha plays that's a popular play within the esports community especially at na maybe just some quick hitters to just get yourself those fast opportunities we didn't really see a lot of pushing up and a lot of aggressiveness really from the helmet boys on the breakout it's going to be interesting to see if they maybe adjust towards that a little bit in this game too pugarino didn't play that bad of a game either so i can't really blame the goalkeeping of that game, yeah, 4 nothing, but like I talked about, 2 nothing really your scoreline. So one of the goals he wasn't even a net for, and uh, I, I can't really blame him. He played okay. I just think you're getting pelted with shots. They, they did manage to block a few, did the Helmet Boys, later on in the third period. Uh, Naslin blocked one. I think Slice blocked another, and they were finally getting in the way of those lanes, but they got to do that from the outset in game number two. Yeah, and you mentioned with Pacorino too, it's like, not only did he not allow one of the goals actually due to the empty net, but two of the goals are on rebounds. It's not really something you can do a lot about as a goalie when you're getting pelted with so many shots. You already made one save. You might have made another. 
Are you really going to expect your goaltender to make that third when you have so many guys in front of you and trying to follow the puck moving in so many different directions the way this game plays? Not really a lot you can do about that as a goalie and CBJ able to take advantage of those opportunities by giving them themselves the quality and quantity of opportunities that they got themselves there. So not a lot that Pugarino could really do because really only one of the goals were just a straight outright shot and it was an empty net. So... I think a lot of it just comes down to being able to break open something offensively for Helmet Boys and getting just a little bit of momentum going. Maybe you kind of adjust a few things on the breakout or the way you play in the offensive zone, whatever it may be. But I think that's kind of where it starts for the Helmet Boys, and then maybe things kind of trickle on down from there and you get something positive going for yourself as you kind of have to win this game too now. It's 2-2 two and two or 1-3, and three and now CBJ just a game away from making that 2-2 two two mark. So a big game here for the Helmet Boys, one that could maybe alter the way that their postseason looks. As we wait for the players to match up here for game number two, if you're CBJ, do you do anything different than you did in game number one? Was there anything that the Helmet Boys gave you that you need to adjust to, or is it just business as usual for this club? A lot of it really is business as usual for CBJ. I mean, really, that game was a pretty straightforward game and to an extent kind of what you expected to see from CBJ. They didn't allow a lot of goals coming into this game. They only allowed 11 in the five games they played. So they only allow about two goals a game in the games they play. And then this one, obviously, they get the shutout. So defensively, it's about business as usual for them. And obviously, the four goal mark, the highest that they have had in any game this season with obviously to being in the last minute whether you value that or not but goals are goals so I, I think a lot of it is business as usual for cbj you know helmet boys are going to throw a few different looks at you that's what this game is all about adjustments strategy and just kind of playing to what your opponent does and adjusting based off that kind of like a chess match so you gotta expect to not have the exact same success doing the exact same thing but i think you kind of have the blueprint to how you can win this series if you're cbj now you just have to continue building off of that and continue being consistent with it as the teams did match up just now uh we're gonna get started on this next game like we said 45 teams are either two and one or one and two so going two and two pivotal right now for the club that wants to move up to the next level in this competition we we see it right here this is going to be a team that's hungry for it in cbj but the helmet boys definitely can respond they have the ability to do so can slice slice through the defense can naslin and damare support them and can charlo and botanique get them the puck to do that time will tell here in game number two as we're ready to go uh final thoughts who does slice need to be the guy that steps up here uh brandon are we looking for the same person to put it on his back or are we going to see something different here in game two I think you're going to have to throw some different looks because you saw CBJ, we were expecting it, and so were they, even more so. They really put an emphasis on locking down their right side of the ice, and Slice just never really got any of those high-quality opportunities of a available to himself before that. So I think a lot of it is that if you want to get it to Slice, that's fine, but I think you're going to have to work your way to that. You're not going to just be able to break it out straight to that left side of the ice and expect something to go from there. You might have to work the puck around a little bit more, maybe put a few shots on that to get Slice in a position to get maybe a goal or two on the board. This team's capable. Just got to figure out how you can break the code that's been the CBJ defense. We'll see what they do here in game two to respond. Slice in the white jerseys, or rather the Helmet Boys, and Slice in the white jerseys, orange trim, orange numbers, going south on your screen. CBJ Gaming in the alternate jerseys, the red jerseys, blue pants, white shoulders and trim going north on your screen. As play begins here. Jaff will pick that up coming in late. And it's thrown in front. Second chance effort. Third chance and a good rebound opportunity for CBJ early. As they try to get one in past Pugarino, who's looked great so far through 60 minutes. Unfortunately, fell short to CBJ Gaming in game number one. As we welcome a new audience here. Wrist shot in. Perelzi with a good save. We welcome everybody into the Caps Gaming Showcase presented to you by Lidos, powered by League Gaming. Nick DeMeo, a.k.a. F5 Penguin, alongside with the call with Brandon B. Major Bigsby. Excited to be here. Happy that you're there. Hope everyone's safe and well and had a great start to their 2022. As we're lighting up here in week number four of this showcase. 
Maslin intercepted, up for slice now. Damare, left side down low, buying time. Good chance to one time that one up to the left circle, but it's picked off nicely by the wingers. Here comes CJ. He's gonna just backhand that one. Got bumped, almost had a lane there as Pugarino did come off his post, but he couldn't get the shot off. That was gonna bounce along the boards. Delayed penalty upcoming here as that one's just waffled on the net. As we have a penalty, a holding. So for the first penalty of the night, going back to CBJ on the power play. Yeah, and a big power play for CBJ. They got things going in game one to begin on the power play. We'll see if things can repeat themselves or if Helmut Boys can kind of change the tide here on a PK. They've been great so far this season on it. Junior Penn's holding. Rebound chance almost fell to the stick of Yam, but he couldn't get it in. It's going to be slap shot out of the zone. Cookie's going to go back to get it all the way. He'll scoop it up along the left board. Now sent along on the give and go. Held up now. Left point. Leaves it off Junior Pence. Center point. Down right circle. Now left point. Shot in. Blocked. Doesn't get on net. Got that short side tucky chance. Did Jan getting cheeky, but Pugarino sniffed it out. And we'll get a stoppage. 11-11 to go here in the first period. I'll say, man, Pugarino, he's been solid this game. He's had a lot of really kind of high danger, quick opportunities that have kind of snuck up on him. He's been there each time until that point. I kind of jinxed him there, Nick. The broadcaster's curse when you go through the faceoff on the set play here. <laughs> Slap shot coming in. And that's going to find its way. Jaff here gets the goal, and it's 1-0. Pugarino, if you're listening, I'm sorry, man. You've been playing a great game, and just... <laughs> Fortunate one there for the goalie, the broadcaster's curse or the commentator's curse as they call it, strike again. But nevertheless, a great play from CBJ, just again getting a chance in front of the net there and capitalizing to get themselves up 1-0. That one-time chance from the corner, try to the second time now. Dimare not able to get that on, but a shot comes in. Perelzi making the save, and he's making sure that one's not going to get past him either. So we're going to face off to his left. Jaff getting his sixth goal of the season. He's working his way up the goal count, leading his team in goals now for the season. The Helmet boys looking to regroup here, but they're not going to do it on that offensive attack. At least now that's stolen. Naslin tried to fire that one in. That one's blocked and pushed along the corner and recovered out by CBJ. This is for Naslin now. Up to Botani, quick passes, finds Damari, now Naslin. Back in the zone. They just can't get past those circles. And when they do, they get down low. And then that one's stuffed out. So what's the answer here as they come three wide? Got some room there. Forced in front, Perelzi! He's going to make the save. Good way to split down there and cover up that puck for a stoppage. I think you kind of just saw shades of the answer there, Nick. I think that they're going to really have to, the helmet boys, that is, they're going to have to really try to get some fast, quick opportunities because on that slow, kind of even play, CBJ, they have been locked down defensively, and the helmet boys have just not been able to crack the code so far. Might have to just try to get some quick opportunities to see what you can get there. They caught one early, trying to split that defense. They got in between pens and cookie. They fell just short, couldn't get the puck to the stick. But I think that was Naslin coming streaking through the middle. As now Charlo's trying to get it out of his zone. Up against the back of the cage. Charlo working. Will finally clear. Now Damare up to Naslin. Fed along in front, bounced off the stick of Junior Pence. Still in the zone. Charlo, that one's blocked. Now in the corner, right side. And out with it comes CJ. The centerman himself. Good looking pass up for Jaff. Back to CJ on the give and go. Shot in, rebound, kick saved by Prugarino. Under 100 seconds here in the first period. Game number two, CBJ won game number one decisively for nothing. As the helmet boys back in the zone, down low, trying to force that one around, they will. Right point back into the circle. Slotting coming in. Kick saved there by Perelzi. And that's going to do it as it's held on by Cookie. Time expires. And at the end of one, it's 1-0 for CBJ Gaming.
It's just kind of a continuing story from the three periods we saw in game one with CBJ just putting shots on net, getting a high qu quantity of opportunities for themselves and just taking advantage of the ones that are there. As you can see, the goal there from Jaff on the tip from the slap shot from Junior Pens. But I think the big thing, too, is you have to look at it for Helmet Boys and you kind of feel for them, right? Because you, you got to be a little frustrated as a forward, at least, and just as a team overall. You're playing your game. The stats are pretty even. Your goalie's making good saves, and you're playing well defensively, but just you can't seem to break anything open, whatever what you do or whatever you try to change. It's just the, CBJ has had the answer for it. So I, I think for the Helmet Boys, it's just finding what can you get to work and how can you keep sustaining it what can you change to get to work because through the first four periods there just haven't really been a lot of opportunities consistently for them and being down one nothing in the series and now in the game they got to get something for helmet boys they're gonna have to open it up here soon sustain being the operative word for probably both clubs sustain is something they need to do if you're helmet boys and get something going sustain is something you have to do if you're cbj and keep the pressure on they're doing so here We'll see how that shakes out as the second period's underway here. Caps Gaming Showcase game number two. In this best of three, that shot comes in. It's bounced along the boards. Left point now. Shot in blocked. Now Jaff will scoop it up from along the right side. And he'll get leveled. And a penalty coming up. Too hard. A boarding call on Botanique. So the defender walks off the ice for two minutes. Power play opportunity for CBJ. And one for one tonight with two shots on. See if they can do it again here. Amare just going to fire that one on net and clear the zone. They will. And it's pushed along. Intended up for now Cookie. Cookie cross with pass. For Jaff, he'll stop short. Trying to find another pass. They can't get in sync. That one's taken away by Naslin. Short-handed opportunity here. Slice looking to get a shot on. Can't do it. That one's brushed off. And up now CJ. Halfway through this power play. In front, chance. Good save there by Pugarino. Pugarino stood tall there on that 1-2. As it comes back out to center. In now for Jan. Jan, CJ. And that's a good effort in. Oh, and it's going to be waved off as they looked great coming into the zone. But too many men up in the kitchen. And that's going to be waved off for interference most likely. Yeah, and it was Jaff there when he tried to get that first rebound. He was still right on top of Pugarino when, uh, I believe if I'm correct, that was Jan that yep. potted it in. Yeah, the second time. So, unfortunate there for CBJ. Helmet boys catch a break. We'll see if they can take advantage of it here to tie this game up. Penalty time expired after that waved off goal as well. Seen about three waved off goals today in week number four between the EU and North American divisions of our Caps Gaming Showcase. We're back to 6v6, 5v5 hockey, depending on who you ask. And I ask uh, my very good friend, Drew Goldfarb, and he'll say it's 6v6 hockey. I'm not going to question him. This play resumes here. 13 minutes left here in the second period. Middle frame of the middle game. And this best of three. CJ from the corner. Backhand looped around the boards. Now up for Jan. Now Cookie back on the give and go. Wrist shot comes in. That's a second after. Good save there by Pugarino. As Pugarino's made some amazing saves so far through about 30 minutes of this game. Yeah, you can't really look at the goalie and ask what he could have done more. Pugarino has done his part. He's made a few big saves here between games one and two. We'll have to keep it up for them to get a chance to get back into this one. He's been well. Can you keep it up here? As CBJ has really been sustaining pressure. Hard for a goalie to keep that up for a long period of time. As he made another save there, push win for Botanique to come out with the puck. He will. Now Slice with some speed, forcing it in front. CJ pokes that away. And Jaff's going to take that in stride. Good look there to come back for it. Wait for it to come to a stick, and he did. The shot there, blocked. Doesn't make it through, doesn't get a lot on it. Turnaround chance, though, for Jan. And another amazing save by Pugarino. And they are coming in droves right now, Brandon. But Pugarino's answering the call each time. 
Yeah, and you have to credit the defense a little bit there of Helmet Boys, too. They tried hitting Jaff there on that 1T, but it just wasn't there for him. Nice job there from the Helmet Boys recognizing that. It is there, though. The one time Chance did get on that time, and Pugarino stood tall again. Shots are 9-1 to one right now in this period for CBJ Gaming. Yeah, they're just pouring it on even more so than they did in Game 1. Helmet Boys have to get it out and quick. And they will hear Damare back in the zone. Another shot does get blocked, though. Second effort pushed aside to the left. It's going to be brought along by Jan. Jan now loses it in the blue, past the blue line. Now Damare takes it across his blue line. A couple of dangles, moves it up to the high slot area. That shot blocked to the right. Shot's not getting on net right now. Charlo throws one on. That one whistles by. Still not getting a shot in. Now Cookie. Cookie will feed it up. CJ will take it out. Shot there. That's sticked away by Pugarino. There's another chance, though, and CJ gets leveled right in the slot area. In the point blank range. Now stepping up into it was Junior Pens. Out of position now. Got to recover. Can Damari take advantage of that? He won't. Good way to buy time. Now center point. Shot in through traffic. And Perelzi's able to see it. Don't know how he saw that. Don't know how that wasn't tipped. But it's kept out of the net, and it's still one nothing. Yeah, maybe a bit of a break there for CBJ that his player didn't really see that. But something to keep in mind, Helmet Boys have been great on faceoffs. Haven't been able to capitalize on it offensively. Can they change that here? It doesn't look like they will. Got to win the faceoffs. Got to get shots on. That shot blocked. That one was fired in from the right side. Now up Charlo. Naslin through the middle. In a lane. Backhand chance off of a skate. And Perelzi stands tall yet again. Good save by Perelzi as Red Light beating Entourage in game number two. Pushing a game three after losing to Entourage 6-0 in game one. That's a big deal for there. Right now, Botanique off the faceoff win. Can't get the shot through. Poked out of the zone. Up for Jaff. Can he get there? He'll get rubbed off. Still there on the puck though. Now loses it. Botanique. From behind the net, now Charlo. Charlo up the left side of the of the ice, skating with the puck now. In for Naslin. Naslin shot in. Kick saved away by Perelzi. He's being tested now late here in the second period. Under five left. Last ditch effort. Cookie feeds one in to CJ. And he scores! CJ able to bury that one with 1.1 seconds to go here in the second. Nick, it's something that you always say. The most dangerous goals in this game are the goals that come in the last minute to 10 seconds of a period. And CBJ gets a huge goal there. That could be the difference between a series win and a game three. A big time goal for CJ to make this a 2-0 lead heading into the third. Now you feel a lot differently heading into this third period than you did just a mere five seconds ago really. Cookie grabs that puck with about five seconds left. Drives from center ice down the left side and finds CJ just waiting for him as looks like the Helmet Boys just stopped pursuing the puck. I don't know what happened there, but there was a lot of speed for Cookie and he took advantage of that and found CJ waiting for the puck. Shot 17-7 to in favor of CBJ Gaming. I think a lot would have to do with that is that that was a solid three minutes there where Helmet Boys were really on the attack and they were playing a rather faster paced game offensively than we had really seen from them all game. Maybe the stamina kind of played a bit of a factor there when it came to getting back. They were so far up in their offensive zone. You have to kind of chase back, use all that stamina. CBJ, on the other hand, were kind of stuck in their zone. So that stamina kind of built up a little bit for Cookie who went up and helped make that play. So a little bit of a misfortunate play when things were going so well for Helmet Boys and CBJ just kind of taking advantage of attacking on it. Slice here in down low. Now Damare. He loses it. Now up. Rebound chance. Second effort. CJ couldn't get the shot on. Trying to go for the dagger early here in the third period. CBJ up 1-0 in this best of three. Now Jaff. Backhand chance. Finds its way to the net, surprisingly.
And now it's up for CJ. We're going to break this out of the zone. He will up to the left defender who got rocked at the blue line. That was Cookie. Got leveled. Sent around 20 feet back and we're offside. Going to be interesting to see how CBJ plays with this 2-0 lead. Obviously, you don't want to get conservative or overly conservative. But the time is kind of becoming your friend here as this game goes on more and more. I don't think they'll take too many chances. Helmet boys are going to probably look to get a bit more aggressive here while CBJ kind of plays back as you're playing for a series now. No wiggle room here for the helmet boys. They're going to have to get something quick as time starts to dwindle and isn't on their side by any means. Naslin from Botanique intercepted at the blue line yet again. A saucer feed trying to get that one up. Fell just short as that one's whiffed at. Shot in, blocked there by Jaff. Potential icing here. It will happen. 14.03 to go. And a crucial offensive zone faceoff for the Helmet Boys coming up. Yeah, something, that's something I was mentioning earlier. I didn't really get to uh, fully finish that point, but the Helmet Boys have been dominant on the faceoff numbers in this game. Or, excuse me, in game one. And it's been actually rather even in this game, as you saw down there. But they haven't been able to get advantage of those in the offensive zone despite of those timely faceoff wins. And, man, they're going to take another penalty here too, Nick. Penalties are going to be what kills them here, especially right now. Being down by two, extra attacker on the ice as Jaff is in the zone. We'll see what the call is if they don't score here. They're going to look to try to break open this lead. Perelzi with a chance in front. Still loose. Finally touched on. And we'll get the penalty call here. Two minutes. And I didn't see the call, but another power play opportunity. One for two so far tonight on five shots. Tipped in front goes wide. Second effort. CJ with a backhand opportunity. That was nice to see the no look short side backhand off the kick pad of the goalkeeper and off the post. And it's out of the net for right now. Back skating with it dangerous there was Cookie trying to find some room but being harassed there by the offense for the Helmet Boys as Jaff back in the zone for their team. Now a breakaway chance, slice there, forehand, backhand, Good defense there by Junior Pens. That pass finds nobody. Naslin, shorthanded opportunity there. As Slice was looking to make it happen. Penalty time expires. Back to five on five hockey. Good kill there by the Helmet Boys. Under nine to go here in the third period. Down by two. They've got to get one soon. Pushed along the boards and finally cleared out by Jaff. That'll trickle back out to center. Virtual Bros winning versus Starstruck, 4-3. They'll force a Game 3 in their series. Will we see one here? CJ looking for Jaff, couldn't connect. Jan lost his helmet. He'll kick it aside. Play continues now. CJ faking the slap shot, gets leveled. Off the back of the goalie. Throws it out. Dangerous. Jaff found it. But Demare able to get that one out of the zone. As defensively, the Helmet Boys are not breaking right now, trying to give up, not give up that third goal. That saucer pass was looking for Jaff. He couldn't find it. Cookie stays up on defense. Now one man back. It's Slice versus Junior Pens. But the rest of the team got back there in time. Now under 3.45 to go here in the third period. Still 2-0 for CBJ Gaming. As that power play goal came in early on, from the tip in, from the face off. CJ just blazing by his defender. Now up Jaff. CJ down low, shot blocked. Second effort though, and it's to Jaff, and he rings it off the post with a laser. It's in the net, and it's 3 0. And number two on the day there for Jaff. He had the tip that you were alluding to earlier, and he gets that one to potentially put the proverbial icing on the cake for CBJ and how about the CBJ team they had the big play defensively from Junior Pens when Slice had the breakaway and then they come back down a few minutes later and get that big goal from Jaff and now for CBJ just got to keep things tight and everything in front of you keep it all in front right now Jaff's gonna go give chase probably not gonna pull their goalie here as a delayed penalty comes in late and that's probably gonna do it here for the Helmet Boys as they take another penalty here. Two minutes for boarding. As CBJ firing on all cylinders right now. 
three nothing your score line one for three on the power play five shots didn't get any on the last power play can the helmet boys put something together in the final 40 seconds they'll clear it for now as we look forward to a two and two cbj and we have to wonder brandon how many two and two and two teams will we see at the end of tonight yeah, and it's funny you mentioned that because a lot of these scores that are coming in are teams that are 2-1 and one or 1-2. One and two. So you're kind of seeing live here some of the shakeups in the standings unfold and some of the teams that CBJ will be in company with and a few maybe potential opponents here for next week. So a big one here for CBJ to close this one out. And now the Helmet Boys, even more important for them to hunker down because 1-3, and three, that's a big mountain to climb. They can do it, but they're going to have to win and Definitely two out of their last three. Assuming no hot streaks, that's about the limit of losses you can make in the regular season in order to get your way in. But that's not going to matter right now. What matters right now is CBJ. As we see the thumbs up from CJ. <laughs> CJ approves, I think, everybody. That's a, that's a CJ approved series win if we've ever seen one. The good old thumbs up and... In, in front of the people there, you, you love to see. You don't get that type of stuff anywhere else but here. I mean, wow. <laughs> you got to give the people what they want. Uh. CJ with the thumbs up at the end there. You love to see it. He was primed and ready to go to give that to us right before ending his broadcast. I have to appreciate that from him as CBJ goes 2-0, and 0, taking both games. Uh, Perelzi getting another shutout. That's really what I wanted to say there as Perelzi walks away with another shutout for him and his squad. And that is a great, great way to cap off a week four win and go back to 500 if you're CBJ gaming. Yeah, and I think that if you're CBJ, they came in losing a series last week. You have to remember, they lost to no expectations, two to nothing. They were both one goal games. So they could easily be looking at three and one if things had gone a little bit differently. Helmet Boys, on the other hand, lost their series to Prodigy that went to three games. Something that you can kind of take a little bit of solace out of because it's like, okay, Prodigy's a team that a lot of people have as a favorite in this tournament, and we played pretty well with them we went all three games we made them work for it we play a team that is of our level and that we can go out and go two and two and unfortunately for the helmet boys things just didn't really line for him in this game tbj locked it down defensively perelzi made the saves he needed to when things got a little bit tough at certain times and just really timely goals for cbj and unfortunately for the helmet boys just not able to coordinate a response in these two games the boys are buzzing indeed cbj going to two and two and uh, this is fantastic to see from them, which I know they were trying to string together wins in other tournaments, building, getting their legs underneath them, and they're finally hitting a stride here. This is a huge win for them, considering they didn't have a formal win in the Caps Gaming Showcase so far, at least on the ice. So them putting this together is a statement, if anything, after falling two series back to back. Yeah, and I, I think it's important to note that because CBJ is kind of one of those teams that you look at and you're like, okay, there's talent on this team. There's a lot of names on this team that you know are good. You know are winners. Guys like Jan and CJ and Jaff that have been on teams that have made runs. And then you have Shelves and J.E.R. Pens or Junior Pens who have not only won on the Sixes side but have illustrious resumes on the versus side as well and at the end of the day whether it be sixes or versus obviously even though they do play differently if you have the skill in the iq you have the skill in the iq and you have those two guys back there and you have this chemistry they've kind of built up you can kind of see the core for the cbj starting to build and starting to mesh it's just a matter on if they can do it consistently and can they do it against those top tier teams it may not always be pretty as we saw today but they get the job done, and I think there'll be a team we'll hear a little bit more for as the series and the season continues to go on. I don't think we've seen the last from them. They have some talent on their squad. I think you're absolutely right. I think when you talk about the the IQ and and way the way you put games together, it's those quick passes where you know where the next person's going to be before they're even there. You know where they're going to be on the ice. We started to see that tonight with CBJ Gaming, and decisively, they walk out with two shutout wins, which is exactly the best case scenario for them. You can't ask for much more from your defense. 
You can't ask much more from your offense. You scored four goals. You scored three goals. You walk away with two wins, and you go on and look for who you're going to face in week number five, which uh, I, I know is going to be an exciting one because two and two, you want to get to that three and two, and, and people are going to fight to get to that three and two. It's going to be a crucial win for whoever walks away with a victory next week for these 500 teams. Uh, but that's going to do it for us tonight. That's it. We're in and out. Two games, two big wins for CBJ Gaming. But that's not all. Please make sure you're following Caps Gaming on Twitter. And of course, make sure you're following League Gaming and all they have to offer for this Caps Gaming Showcase presented to you by Lightos and powered by League Gaming. Mr. Lime, we hope you're feeling better, my friend. We hope you rest up. That's going to do it for us. So on behalf of the entire staff over at Caps Gaming and MSC, on behalf of the entire staff over at League Gaming, and thanks to our sponsor at Lightos. My name is Nick DeBeo, a.k.a. F5 Penguin. I'm alongside with you for Brandon B. Major Bigsby. We hope you had an amazing new year. We hope you enjoyed our coverage today. Be safe, be healthy, and let's kick off 22, 2022 the best way we know how with great, high-quality, high-octane action on NHL 22. Take care for now, folks. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.